Fifty miles to the north, a Catholic mission is the last outpost of civilization. Five missionaries have been killed in these last few years before the sound of the bell awakened faith in these valleys. hundreds of dark centuries, men discover for the first time in their lives that they have a doubt, a question to which they cannot find an answer, a vague and unknown anguish which is not hunger, nor thirst, nor physical pain, but aches like a wound just the same. It is the anguish which accompanies man from the beginning to the end of the world, but they still don't know it. They discovered the world and themselves only yesterday. And today, already, they need a faith which will give them the hope of becoming better people in a better world. Native society is not simply described as a society lacking in values. The native is declared insensible to ethics. He represents not only the absence of values, but also the negation of values. All values, in fact, are irrevocably poisoned and diseased as soon as they are allowed in contact with the colonized race. The customs of the colonized people, their traditions, their myths, above all, their myths, are the very sign of that poverty of spirit. As soon as the native begins to cause anxiety to the settler, he is handed over to well-meaning souls who point out to him the wealth of Western values. I speak of the Christian religion, and no one need be astonished. The church in the colonies is the white people's church, the foreigner's church. She does not call the native to God's ways, but to the ways of the white man, of the master, of the oppressor. And as we know, in this matter, many are called, but few chosen. How long have you been here? Här i Tanzania, ja. sen 52 i december månad. Så Vad det... som skulle vara intressant att höra är vad har förändrats här framför allt i första hand. Ja, det, det är största förändringen och det är väl för, att det, det blev ett fristat. Ja. Det är väl faktiskt en av de största. Har människorna förändrats på något sätt? Invändigt så att säga. <laughs> ja, det de är väl rätt så lika tror jag. Har ni själv förändrats? Ja, ja det har man säkert efter så många år. I, i vilken riktning? Ja. Det är... 
man, man ser väl kanske lite annorlunda på läget också nu än strax när man kom ut ska jag tänka mig. Så man kanske ser lite mer realistiskt på det också. Mm. Har ni försökt att ändra på människor? Det har väl varit en del av er uppgift? För ja, det. det är klart. Det har vi väl försökt. För att vi är ju ute i missionens tjänst. Och på så sätt har vi försökt att ja. förändra. I första hand då i religiösa frågor naturligtvis. Ja, Vad fanns det för religion här innan ni kom hit? Är det någon som eh, ni inte tycker att det kan godkännas så att säga? Det fanns... Den afrikanska religionen men jag. Den afrikanska religionen, det har väl, vad ska man säga, den, den har väl alltid funnits och den fortsätter väl finnas, det är klart. Men eh, missionen i stort sett, den har ju fått ett väldigt bra grepp över folksjälen, tror jag. Ja. Ja. Men det måste ju ha inneburit stora förändringar på många håll. Till exempel vad ska jag säga, familjeorganisationer med polygami och sånt. Ja, du kanske du kan säga. Ja. ja, vi som mission vi förbjuder ju att församlingsmedlemmar ska ha mer än en hustru mm. till exempel. Det är ju otänkbart för en som tillhör en pingsförsamling här ute att kunna gifta sig en andra eller tredje gång. Där då får han nöja sig med sin första fru. Är det egentligen en kristen synpunkt eller är det en europeisk synpunkt? Finns det något stöd i Bibeln för monogami? Det gör det väl. Gör det? <skratt> Minst den i det nya testamentet. Så. Finns det någonstans ni... där att man bara får en hust? Till exempel, det står, det står att en, en församlingsbeståndare ska vara en mans hustru. En hustrus man. Alltså. Ja. <laughs> Och nu bygger ni en kyrka här i Morsi. Ja, det har vi. Ja, jag ser. Är det, det som kommer först, så att säga, kyrkan, evangeliseringen? Ja, det brukar vi försöka att göra. Kommer ni att också bygga skolor och sjukhus och sånt här? Eller? Det vet vi inte just Nej, nu. Det får, bli, det får bli i andra hand i så fall. Ja. Men först en kyrka. Ja. För att det känner vi väldigt stor behov av att få. In the colonial context, the settler ends his work of breaking in the native when the latter admits loudly and intelligibly the supremacy of white man's values. For a colonized people, the most essential value, because the most concrete, is first and foremost the land. The land which will bring them bread and above all, dignity. But this dignity has nothing to do with the dignity of the human individual. For that human individual has never heard tell of it. All that the native has seen in his country is that they can freely arrest him, beat him, starve him, and no professor of ethics, no priest, has ever come to be beaten in his place, nor to share his bread with him. The well-known principle that all men are equal will be illustrated in the colonies from the moment that the native claims that he is the equal of the settler. The native intellectual had learned from his masters that the individual ought to express himself fully. The colonialist bourgeoisie had hammered into the native's mind the essential qualities of the West, the idea of a society of individuals, where each person shuts himself up in his own subjectivity, a society whose only asset is individual thought.
the colonized man will first manifest this aggressiveness, which has been deposited in his bones against his own people. This is the period when the niggers beat each other up and the police and magistrates do not know which way to turn when faced with the astonishing waves of crime. All these patterns of conduct are those of the death reflex when faced with danger. A suicidal behavior which proves to the settler that these men are not reasonable human beings. The oppressor starts the process of domination, of exploitation, and of robbery. In the other sphere, the coiled, plundered creature, which is the native, provides fuel for the process as best he can. The process moves uninterruptedly from the banks of the colonial territory to the palaces and the docks of the mother country. In this becalmed zone, the sea has a smooth surface. The palm tree stirs gently in the breeze. The waves lap against the pebbles and raw materials are ceaselessly transported, justifying the presence of the settler. There's no way f or place for me to go. This is my home. And this is where I intend to die. The settler makes history. His life is an epic, an odyssey. He is the absolute beginning. This land was created by us. He is the unceasing cause. If we leave, all is lost, and the country will go back to the Middle Ages. And all the while, the native, bent double, more dead than alive, exists interminably in an unchanging dream. The native is boxed into a corner. Apartheid is simply one form of the division into compartments of the colonial world. The first thing which the native learns is to stay in his place and to not go beyond certain limits. This is why the dreams of the native are always of muscular prowess. His dreams are of action and of aggression. I dream I'm jumping, swimming, running, climbing. I dream that I burst out laughing, that I span a river in one stride, or that I'm followed by a flood of motor cars which never catch up with me. During the period of colonization, the native never stops achieving his freedom from nine in the evening until six in the morning. 